Well, hi everybody. I bought a six inch backhoe bucket for my 260 backhoe on the John Deere 1025. Let's review that today, and I'm real excited to show you how I have made it into a scraper bucket. Well, hi everybody. I wanted to purchase a six inch backhoe bucket because I've got a couple hundred feet of uh, one inch conduit to bury and I thought the narrow trench would be ideal. So I purchased that and then it wasn't too long and I've got some project coming up with a landscape rock. I want to take just the landscape rock off of the ground. I don't want to change the, uh, the terrain or the soil. I just want to take that old landscape rock off, clean it up and, and do something else. Also a viewer pointed out while I was backfilling around some trees that I was uh, had just planted with the backhoe to get something round, cut a slot in it so it would go over these teeth and make it so it could fasten here quickly and easily and I could drag that across the top of the grass and not tear up the grass. Well I ran with that idea a little bit, I was very appreciative of it and I came up with a couple other ideas. I went to my dealer and said well how about if I just buy a, another bucket and I take the teeth off and use this factory edge. Well, he suggested, why not save the money and just take the teeth off? Well, that was a pretty good idea. He talked me out of spending any money there that day. But I didn't want to do that. So then I got with another friend who is very talented on metal work. And what he has done, he has made a shoe that's going to go over this bucket and create a scraper blade. The scraper blade's about 15 and a half inches wide, and there's no particular reason. I just had uh, a piece of old snow plow blade, then when cut into three pieces, that's what we were left with. And I thought, well, that's fine. You can see he welded them both together. There's the shoe, that's where the teeth are going to go in. This is going to bolt on the side of the bucket. Here's another piece here. And then here's the snowplow blade. Uh, here's the edge on it. Can you see that? So there's that tapered edge. So it's, I think it's really going to be a nice tool for, for that. Excited to use it. This weighs 30 pounds, so I'm not too worried about putting too much weight on the end of this bucket. Going from the 11 inch bucket, is it? Or the 12 inch bucket? I'll check that and confirm it. Going to, the, to that bucket, to this, it's probably 30 pounds less, so I'm not worried about it. Besides, I'm not going to really be doing digging with when I put the scraper blade on. It's just going to be taking off some materials that are sitting on top or it's uh, real loose, and, and I want to use a scraper blade. So, I haven't seen any videos on how to change out a bucket on the 260 backhoe. Let's do that today. Let's put this in, and we'll take a look at it and see how it's going to work. Well, I did confirm uh, when I purchased this backhoe, it's an 11 inch bucket. I'm going to call it 11 inches. It's about 10 and 7 eighths on the inside and on the outside about uh, 11 and a half. So it looks pretty straightforward. It looks like all we have to do is take this nut and bolt out here in two places, slide that pin out, and uh, it should be able to take that bucket off. I haven't done this before, so you're going to see me use a, a, a small dowel to push the pin out, and then I left the uh, dowel in place. The dowel was just a little bit smaller, so it pushed the pin out real nice and then still held the bucket in place. Here I'm trying to show you that the pin I removed, it, it's all lubed up and greased up. There's no wear. I've probably got 10 hours on this backhoe. And everything seems to be wearing very well, and the grease is working very well, too. It kind of surprises me here. I, I thought this would be a two-person job, and uh, the dipper stick piston there dropped down and put the bucket right on the ground real nice. That washer goes right there 
at all four of those locations between the dipper stick and the bucket. It's probably there for wear, so don't forget to put those back on. Took the opportunity to clean off some grime. Cleaned, uh, cleaned all that up. I'm going to give it a fresh uh, grease here when I get it back together. The dowels worked out real well just to temporarily hold the bucket. Now at this point I'm thinking I need another person. Well, it takes me a while sometimes to figure things out. Then it dawned on me why not lower the dipper stick down to the bucket. It's almost embarrassing watching this process. Then it dawned on me, lower the boom and the different stick, stick. There you go, genius. So now it got a lot easier. Things really did go back together pretty well. I, I was expecting things to be bound up and rusted up, I guess. But everything did come apart fairly easy. There's a little point, there's a opportunity to practice patience. Just to get things to line up, you know, the washer and so on. But it really didn't take very long at all and the next time's gonna be that much quicker. So I give everything a fresh squirt of grease and we're about ready to go and put the uh, shoe on. While putting the shoe on, it didn't take me too long to figure out, well I put about five coats of uh, paint and primer on this and it was just enough just to make it a little more difficult to put on. So I went over and, and ground that off and then it slid right on. Put the nuts and the bolts through there and we're just about done and ready to go out and try it out. Here's a few pictures showing how it was uh, manufactured. Kenny is a very talented welder and uh, metal worker. Made this all out of scrap steel and I think it's pretty nice. Could I have went wider? Probably. But that's the stock that we had, and that's what we used. Here's my project. I want to uh, dig all this rock out, the weed. It's just overgrown. It just needs a fresh face. Now you might think I'm going pretty slow, but around the deck and the, uh, the house there, I want to take my time and get the feel of this. I'm never in a rush while using this equipment. And I'm being overly cautious here, just trying to get the feel of this. I'm not getting real aggressive with the rock yet. Getting a little more comfortable, getting closer to the house now. A little more pressure on the boom. See all I want to do is pull uh, pull all that stone out of there. After 11 inches of rain last month, I don't want to go in there with a rear blade and tear all that up. I don't want to go in there with the front bucket and tear it all up and tear the yard that's on the other side of that sidewalk. So this is a real nice way to go in there and just kind of surgically go in and take that stone out or whatever I want to rake out of there. And so far, I'm really happy with the way this is working.
So I'll have to move the tractor a few times, but once I get all this rock raked over by the sidewalk, then I'll come back with the front loader and put it in there and take it over to all something I'm designing now, some grates or something to wash all the rock off, wash the dirt off of it, and then I'm going to reuse it. Well, that's what I wanted. You can see it's just taking the gravel off, not getting into the dirt very much, and that's all I want to do. I'll practice a little bit with it, and I'll be able to get closer to that stone on the foundation. My gosh, I think this is going to be a, a fun little tool to have. I'm sure you're all going to be able to improve on this idea and design it and uh, make it even better. But this is a, a great prototype here to start with, I think. That's the nice thing about YouTube, the sharing of ideas. I really appreciate that. Oh, and one last thing before we wrap this uh, episode up. Don't forget you made your bucket longer, so don't slam it into your boom. I'm just kind of demonstrating there now how that's changed. So you can't pull your dipper stick in, curl your bucket up, and miss your boom. So keep that in mind if you build one of these for yourself. Thanks for watching the video, everybody. Have a great week. Wait for the excavator to get here yet on the pond. Be nice to each other. Talk to you soon.